What's up, Dub Nation? We're here live. Uh, we would have been live right now had we still played the game in Utah. And uh, condolences go out to Decky and his family and the Warriors family. And I, I just got off the uh, live stream over at Lakers Fast Break. Um, very nice gentleman there, Sean Grice, known as Magic Man, over there at Lakers Fast Break. They uh, He invited me on because um, he felt the connection because his mom recently passed away. So I felt really grateful that, you know, he wanted me on their um, pregame show live on YouTube, and um, it was an honor to be there. So I just got done um, on that one, and let's take a look at, yeah, right here. So I was on, I was on uh, videos, oh, live. I was on the pregame of uh, Mavericks uh, Lakers. So anyways, um, I want to pull up a few uh, things about Decky. Obviously, we have a whole library. If you wanted to go and check it out, you can just type Google search of Let's Go Warriors Milojevic, which is his last name. And you'll see a whole bunch. Wiseman post-up workout. Let's go ahead and put this in the background. It's only two minutes and 38, but like gives us a little something to look at while uh while we're uh, talking about um decky um so partisan belgrade the uh most notable uh franchise in serbia professional um basketball team often gets to uh euro league playoffs and all of that um uh, Alan Smilagic is on that team. Smiley. Um, I wonder what Smiley, if he did anything on Instagram. But, um, yeah, Decky uh, is just revered, revered in Serbia. Uh, nothing from Smiley yet. And if we just let's put this on pause. What's up, James Wiseman? All the time he put in to helping James. Um, Instagram.com. Partisan ABC. Partisan ABC. Oh, we got another partisan? Partisan us? No. Partisan ABC, I believe. No. Hold on. I got it in my Instagram. Partisan BC. Basketball club. Duh. Partisan BC. One really cool thing is look at three, four, five posts, six maybe. Five, at least five posts on Decky alone. This one is to say every fan will be allowed free to the partisan versus uh well the 22nd of january their game is free for all fans and it says to wear black in honor of decky like wow i mean this is like this is like that movie uh what was it called big fish or something like that where there was a funeral and so many people went to it and you just, you didn't realize that uh, that person touched so many lives, but he did. And, uh, and it's, it's heartbreaking in terms of like, for me personally, I didn't know Decky. I never even really met him, but he was always there. As you can see. I mean, he's there. So, like, he would give you a little nod. You know, that's what we do in basketball. 
see somebody you see all the time, give a little nod, whatever it may be. And um, so that part, that part sucks in that here's a guy I saw nearly every day and he, he won't be there anymore. So that part sucks. But then I think what really sucks for us as fans is that that's a one degree contact for all the guys on the team. He's there every day. He's at every team meal, every practice, every shoot around, every film session, every walkthrough. He's there checking into the hotel room with the team on the, on the flight on the bench. I think, I think it would be amazing for them to leave. I don't want to get all broken up here, but to leave a, a seat open for him on Friday. Right. Whew. So it's tough to talk about, but the more we talk about it, just like, Sean of Let's uh, Lakers Fast Break just just said in honor of his mom, who recently passed away, is that the more we have these memories of the guy, that's how we honor them. That's how we do it. So R.I.P. Man, R.I.P. Decky. Um. I'll kind of leave this search result here for everybody. You might that's the thing about uh that's the thing about uh Safari it doesn't really do that for you. Hold on. YouTube.com let's go warriors Milojevic. Oh, okay, yeah. So that our footage of him, our footage of Decky throughout the years. Um, Writing a few notes in the description as time timestamps. We're heartbroken for the team. You know, I I have a couple people that are close with the team. Um, oh, I, I, I should text one of them. He's not on social. But, um, you know, they check, they check the Let's Go Warriors Instagram stories all the time. And today, they didn't check. So you, your heart goes out, just, just little signals like that, like, like man, they're they're really grieving right now. Um, look at that; that's amazing. Some of the stuff I didn't even, you know, I would just record it and do other stuff. Like I was always the two phone guy at every practice and whatnot. And uh, some of these, you know, I haven't even watched. Draymond gets tips on release point from Dejon. Dayon. Crazy, isn't it?
Cholo with the excellent comment. You see how, like, I'm not even really paying attention to what I'm filming. Sometimes it gets like that when I used to be at practices and, and it's tiring and I hope you can understand why I don't go to practices anymore. It's dragging your body here and there and filming this and that. And it's just a little crazy. Too bad. I mean, I, I would get way more views, <laughs> you know, go to practice, get 10,000 views. Nowadays, a couple thousand on these live streams, not a whole lot. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about more stuff. We'll talk about everything Warriors soon enough. Um, but, uh, you know, take your time. Give yourself some space for this. There's no rush to get anything done when you're sort of grieving and stuff. All right. Uh, Nicole says, I wish we had someone who could give us a little insight. I mean, today basketball isn't going to matter. Today what you did wrong against Memphis isn't going to matter. Uh, Steph's five turnovers doesn't matter. Clay Thompson forgetting to box out Gigi Jackson, that one play that I was looking at. I didn't clip it for you, but I was looking at it. And he got mad at himself for that. But it still happened. That doesn't matter. Draymond coming back in whatever minutes he's supposed to play doesn't matter. So just today is really just grieving the loss of a comrade, of a guy that's, you know, we call these practices being in the trenches. I was in the trenches with, with the team. That's what you call it. So you you have that bond. And if you if you had even more, trench time with um you know hate to use the the war analogy but nevertheless if you spend even more time with the gentleman who who was usually very very much in a happy mood and pretty much smiling a lot of the time you know it's even tougher and so all the guys this guy right here off the screen, Khalid Robinson, <laughs> he's grieving because you spend so much time. Anthony Vereen right here, he's grieving. You spend so much time with the guy. So that's what you do today. Now, you got to go back to work. The NBA moves on, and so... It's always going to be there. I can only imagine having a coach's meeting. And that's tough. And he's not there. Anyways, I have not seen anything yet. But, yeah, you guys, uh, if you have a link that has a snippet, uh, although probably wouldn't be able to play it here. Go check that out. But thank you guys for joining on. You know, um, this is why we do what we do. I figured, you know, we'd we'd want to uh, we'd want to be together, even in a virtual platform like this, and just just talk about stuff. And uh, I I did talk about a lot on the Lakers fast break podcast that i just got off of so we'll talk about that um used to coach Jokic. uh here's uh yes and more um here's a, a incredible tweet from kevin dana of the santa cruz warriors play-by-play -play guy
eight years, eight seasons, he had 11 guys drafted into the NBA. Prior to that, one. Wow. That's an incredible stat for a coach, isn't it? That's an incredible stat. So not just Jokic, but maybe not as a direct coach but holy smokes 11 other nba draft picks decky was a part of i think jokic was one of those incredible 11 serbians to become NBA draft picks. I bet you Smiley was one of them. In an eight-year span. That's unheard of. That's just, that's legendary. I think, I think there needs to be a case for him to be in the Hall of Fame type of deal. Like that, that's an incredible stat right there in terms of international basketball. Bridging the gap. Only uh, only 46 years old. That's crazy. But anyways, we are here now and looking at some of these uh, new users. Glad you're here. Yep. Moment of silence. Might as well let's just take a moment of silence right now. Take a moment of silence. What do we want to talk about? Because uh, there's a lot. There's a lot. Oh, thanks, Ed. Yep, dedicate the season for him, huh? What was the... Uh, I could have sworn I was... Watching a game on watching an NFL game the other night, and they were was it the Lions? I forget who it was. Where they they had some tragedy as well, and they came together and, and made a run the rest of the season. I, I can't remember. Anybody remember that? It might not happen with us. But it might happen, too. Maybe it gets us to play with more pride, with more attention to the game plan and so on and so forth. Okay, let me let me tweet out the link to this so we can get more people on.
Okay, let me see here. Boom. Boom. Whoops. So what do you want to talk about, guys? Because uh, there's a lot. There's a lot to talk about. And I think I know what I want to talk about first. <laughs> but uh, leave it up to you guys. Just go ahead and comment in there while I get this thing all done. Okay. I am now on Instagram trying to post this, this link so that more people can join us. And then we'll talk. Man, that took forever. You got uh, Serbians in the league, such as, uh, whoops, hope that didn't demonetize me right there. Oh, damn. That sucks. Let's go back a little bit. That was the podcast I was just on. Safari is going to really mess with me like this, aren't they? Come on, Safari. Work with me here. I really got to retype this in. Incredible. Oh, my gosh. Safari sucks. Let's just stay in YouTube. I guess Google isn't being very nice to us right now. Let's go Warriors. Dejan. Actually, I just, that's the best search term. Dre workout. We saw the Wiseman post up. Steph workout with his name in the title. So he must have done something there. Oh, and I have all these videos. Yeah. All right. So I'm almost done here. Okay, let's see what you want to talk about. Nicole put the Bob Myers uh, thing from ESPN on there. It's uh, two minutes and 20 seconds, the uh, maximum of Twitter. So let's throw that in the uh, description. Okay, thanks for that. What else we got? Yeah, everybody across the league. Um, Zubots of the Clippers. Um, Mitchich of OKC. And who else am I missing? Well, those are two guys that posted 
Instagram posts about Decky, basically saying um, rest in peace and thank you for helping me along the way. All right, so we can talk about, yeah, Adriatic League, MVP, yeah, he was definitely, if you just go to the Partizan BC, Partizan Basketball Club uh, Instagram, you'll, you'll see how important he was. And if you translate, you can translate on Instagram, you'll see some amazing stuff like, he didn't want to come back immediately because there was another legend in front of him. Like, wow, that's that's a lot of respect. Like, these are guys that just, you know, embody um, what basketball is all about. Mike Brown said a few words. Yep. So did Darko. Um um Mark Markayovich, I think is Darko, the head coach of the Raptors, who who coached the Raptors to a win against us recently, and who also ripped the referees. So there's there's that. Now here's some post-game tunnel. We had a lot of stuff with them. Um, even back to when Clay was still rehabbing. Pajemski said, thank you. You changed my life. Wait till, wait till uh, the old vets uh, post their Instagrams. Those are going to be uh, heartwarming as, as well. So uh, shall we talk about the Siakam trade because I noticed something from the Siakam trade that directly impacts the Warriors. Let's see. Uh, what's the start of QA thing? What does this do? Like, what's the importance of that versus just? Uh, Versus just uh, going off the comments. I don't know. Start q and I don't know. This is strange. End q and Oh, okay. I don't know how this works. This doesn't seem very helpful. Anybody going to type anything? My uh, my entire chat is gone. Oh, okay. Now I can do. Well, nobody's asking any questions. All right, then we'll we'll talk about uh, we'll talk about the Siakam trade. All right, Chris. <laughs> why why do you do why do you act that way? I mean, is there some like addiction to <laughs> I mean why why do you have to why do you have to, you know, poo-poo whatever thing all the time? It just it's time to grow up, Chris. <laughs> I mean, and at least it's happening under the context of a Siakam trade rather than a Warriors thing. Because if it was a Warriors thing, you'd probably end up throwing a Warrior under the bus, right? Like, there is no need to go, oh, the Bucks, you know, they're in trouble now. Like, we don't know that. Like, you're trying to predict and 
you're trying to pump your chest like you know king kong like i, I mean that's for everywhere else uh, we've we've evolved past the neediness of the young male adolescent to stroke his ego there's no need to do that so i th i think it's smarter to 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 react in ways like this like oh it's it's interesting that they're gonna fit siakam with miles turner and so on and so forth um so you know um so here's here's what i'll get to um we'll get to you jeff keep keep those questions going on and i'm gonna end the q a like pff, that didn't work whatever um uh, well <laughs> I'm glad you asked, Robbie, because um, Jake Fisher of Yahoo, he has a lot of inside clout with the GMs and stuff, said that GSW was not willing to trade JK and Moody or Moody and or and slash or Moody for Siakam. And I think that speaks volumes, right? That speaks volumes. So the number one topic from the Siakam deal is that we want Moody. Isn't that crazy? I would have thought, honestly, taking the human element out of it, I would have thought that moody would be expendable in order to improve the team namely we would try to trade wiggins and moody for siakam why not of course the argument can be made that oh Masai, nah he drives a hard bargain and i've talked about that plenty of times on this channel we can't read Masai. He's he's different. He's he's the black sheep of the GMs out of the 30 teams. He doesn't do the win-win scenario type thing. He's just he just does what he does. And actually, um, now that uh we're past the Siakam trade, um, maybe it's time to re re-up what uh Dean wrote on the website, but it, he submitted the article kind of haphazardly so it just kind of went out there and i need to rope that back in he explains how most gms find a win-win situation whereas ujiri doesn't seem to do that all that much and uh the people out of toronto if you go to no dunks incorporated no dunks inc here on instagram instagram.com no dunks inc these are some pretty solid, it's still entertainment for the most part, but these are some guys that are from Toronto. Uh, my guys, like J.E. Skeets, they play ball too, so they get it. Like These are really solid guys. Lee Ellis, and they've been in, in this NBA media game for years. They were, they were sponsored by the NBA for a good minute on NBA TV. They had their own show. That doesn't happen often. Imagine if we had our own Let's Go Warriors show on NBA TV. That's how mind-boggling it was for these guys. So these guys are pretty reasonable. And they're saying they're from Toronto. And they're saying Masai waited too long to trade Siakam. Because the trade is fair, in their opinion, for Bruce Brown, Nora, and three first-round picks. Two of them which are coming next year. But Eric Kareen of um, one of the Toronto newspapers was also saying that um, it looked like, or oh, man, I can't remember who exactly, but one of the one renowned beat writer, uh, Kareen's with The Athletic. The other guy's Michael Grange. He's with the newspaper in Toronto. Or he might be with the cable company. I can't remember but reputable Toronto beat writers. If not Toronto, then NBA beat writers. We're basically saying this could have been Jake Fisher as well, that um, 
it seemed like from the OG Ananobi trade that they wanted more established young talent. Well, guess who's established young talent? Moody. Moody's established, and he's young, and he's talent. So is Wiggins, quite honestly, if Wiggins is playing well. And the thing is, is that... Energy um, is first. You oh, can sit bad. down with somebody for two minutes and I just... I did not know what was in that window. Oops. Let's go back to the YouTube. And uh, so it seemed like Toronto wanted good young talent. And I think Wiggins and Moody's is a pretty solid deal. Uh, and maybe some drafts draft pick swaps in the future or something. I don't know. Maybe throw in a Garuba or a, I don't know, Guy Santos. I don't know. Uh, let's give them some assets, flyers to fill it in. I thought though, I think that's more than Bruce Brown and Nora I don't know. I think it's pretty up there. It's comparable. So for for that for that deal not to happen, meaning we didn't want to give up Moody. Oh, I think I think that's great. That makes me feel better about JK and Moody, that's for sure. Now can we still play better? We're still 18 and 22. We still suck. But it's kind of heartwarming to know on a heartbreaking day. Kind of heartwarming to know that seems like we're committed to JK and Moody because of the Siakam deal. So Moody was uh, rumored to be uh, not willing to be in a trade uh well not moody was uh gsw was rumored to be not willing to trade kaminga and or moody so that's the uh that's the uh, the takeaway from the Siakam trade between Toronto and Indiana. Seems like we're committed to JK and Moody in the future. Seems like it so far. Of course, Moody could get traded tomorrow, blow that theory out the water. And uh, hey, that's pretty good news for us that you know, don't want to trade anybody and just want to play better. Uh, Johnson, uh, you're worried about the contract extension. There, there's nothing to worry about <laughs> because we basically control their contracts. We control their contracts. We just need to do the deal and the option is the option i mean the the extension is the extension you just got to be willing to pay it and you you pay the market rate whatever it may be so don't worry about that we we've got jk and moody that's why the collective bargaining agreement makes it so that you draft a guy you have basically control over his destiny if you're willing to pay it for the next nine years. So we're good. Now, um, there is the second apron to be worried about, but I think the cap is going to go up a lot and I think there'll be more space than people think. And we should really do a spreadsheet, but uh, I don't really have the time for it, but uh, salary cap should continue 
to go up, meaning the second apron will get further away as time, as each year goes by. So as far as can we afford to pay all these guys? The other thing to not worry about is that if we if we really want to keep them, uh, we'll figure it out. You know, that that gets to our second topic of the night, which is Clay Thompson. And uh, so we'll talk about Clay Thompson. But what else are we talk about in the comments? Do the Mavs have an eye on wigs? I mean, you're asking me to say if what Jake Fisher wrote is true. I mean, again, you must remember where you heard things from. Seek the source. If you were committed to knowing where rumors come from then you wouldn't need to ask me that you'd be like oh that's jake fisher and he usually has ties you can come on here and you can go hey rich what do you think of jake fisher and i'll tell you that well he talks to a lot of gms and he he got to where he is the the hard way which is to do all the legwork to call all the gms on a one-by-one -one basis and it turned out they were willing to talk to him. So he used to be at Bleacher Report, got a promotion by Yahoo. So now he's get he gets um, paid a salary and benefits to keep calling up the GMs and keep writing the articles of the rumors and what he's hearing. Kudos to Jake Fisher. Did it the hard way. Just like me, the hard way. You do your time, you grind. So Jake Fisher is reliable. So it's likely that Dallas is interested in wigs. But I, I, you know, the next thing that you do after that is you go to the salary cap and you kind of go, all right, who the hell do they have that we would want for 32 million or whatever it is? I'm sorry, but like, I'm not, I'm not drawn by any of these. So maybe it's a three-team deal. And like I've said before, it's impossible to predict a three-team deal. But I can tell you this. I don't see anybody on that roster with a salary that matches or salaries plural that matches uh, Wiggins that, you know, jumps off the page. But I could be wrong. So next step is always to look at the salary cap tables of each team on hoops hype and figure out who on dallas the warriors would want so barring barring a three three team trade which is unpredictable i don't see anyone jump off the page of course tomorrow we might trade right now. Wigs might be traded to Dallas. Who knows, right? So you you take it all with a grain of salt. So we're about to talk about Clay, though. Yeah, so what does that mean? We don't know. But we know that Moody wasn't traded to Toronto for Siakam. So I think that says a lot about Moody.
We'll know more at the end of the trade deadline. Especially when uh, Dunleavy takes the podium. And he will. He will. So just be patient. There's only eight more games. We'll certainly have more information. Only eight more games or so. February 8th. Let's see. Well, truth be told, Draymond, Draymond, Steph, Clay on the court has been a small sample size. Remember, Dre missed 11 of 22 games to start out due to uh, Gobert suspension. And getting ejected. And one DNP at Denver, which we never heard about. Maybe someday I'll hear about. But not in the near future. So also, I should say, in an interview uh, with Tom Tobert yesterday, Steve thought maybe uh, Wiggins came into the season out of rhythm due to all that happened last season. So yeah, Wiggins coming back and playing like crap. Uh, Clay coming back into the season, playing like crap. I mean, with Draymond there, again, small sample size. And I know I told this on, I said this on the Lakers fast break thing just now, is that we do have an excuse for this 18 and 22 record. And that excuse is that Draymond has missed. A lot of games. What is that? 40 games and he was out like 13. I mean, does does the Memphis game count as, you know, 23 and a half minutes? You could even, that's the thing is we, we have the excuse. And I know outraged people are going to say, no, that's just an excuse. That's not a reason. As long as it can be tagged as a reason, then you can you can throw that out of the sample size. So that's... 11 out of 22 games. And then, so I, I think he's maybe played uh, like 12 or 13 full games. Is that really enough? One hundred percent, right? But it's going to have to be enough coming up to the trade deadline. So trade deadlines, February 8th. So we we're going to have a small sample size of what, you know, I should really go look at it. All we have to do is go to BK ref and go look at it. BK ref.com Draymond green. You know, you could go here and you could really count all the games where he didn't play 32 minutes, right? Use BK Ref to find out all the games where Dre played 30, 30 plus minutes 
and had an impact. Ask yourself if, if that's um, a sample size that's enough to determine if the Trinity is broken. I, I really don't think it is just yet. And I know we're 18 and 22. And I know we have a trade deadline coming up. But I still don't think it's enough of games. It just isn't. And it sucks. Like, oh, woe is me. Nobody cares. I get that. I'm not asking for sympathy. I'm just saying literally the sample size is not enough. So we need to play more games. I gave it until the deadline. I said, let's watch the next 10 games, starting with Memphis. The Memphis game was not a really good barometer. Number one, Steph got top locked all game. Now, is every team going to top lock us? Some teams don't have the personnel. Some teams should, but they don't. We should probably expect Steph to be top locked every playoff game but then we'll come up with counters. I'm just saying that going into Memphis, you traveled the day before from Milwaukee and you're getting Draymond back. I mean, it was, it was brilliant strategy by Taylor Jenkins in a seven game series. We're going to beat Memphis that, that Memphis team. We're probably going to beat them in six games or better. Right. But, and I mean, if the seven game series started tomorrow, like we're, we're really not that horrible. We'll figure it out, but they got us that one game. Right. And we're, we got so many things on our plate. Draymond's coming back. Well, he only played 23 and a half minutes. So that one's tough to judge. So now we got nine games, but the Utah game got canceled or postponed because Decky passed away. Now we got eight games left. So I don't even feel comfortable judging Draymond, Steph, and Clay in their system. Just like, just like we can't say it's working just based on the couple of buckets in the first quarter, right? We can't say it's working, but we also can't say it's broken just from the one game. Because when Draymond stepped onto the court, oh, man, it was flowing. Remember? It was flowing. Well, we can't take that sample size to say that, oh, we're fine. The same way you can't do that, the opposite extreme is, is the same. You can't say that there. it's broken. You can't. It's not enough. We need to see more. We need to see Draymond at 100% playing 30 minutes a game. We really do. Unfortunately, we got the trade, trade deadline coming up. So, you know, it's tough. But I have a trade scenario, and I texted it to Dean, and we'll talk about it shortly. Dean's in the chat. Bob Myers will be at Chase Center. Yep. And uh, what else? Oh, thank you. Just too much crap. All right, I'm catching up on the comments. I'm catching up, and I'm excited to give you my trade scenario, even though I told you I didn't want to do those, but it makes sense. Makes sense to me.
Uh, so one of the things Johnson's talking about finagling a big. Um, are we sure that Joe, Mike, Steve have determined it's time to go away from the Trinity, which is the ecosystem, which is the action that you see in the first quarter of the Memphis game? I, I don't know that that's we can make that assessment yet. So the first step towards getting a big man is to say that Steph, Clay, and Draymond, that's broken. And I don't think we can say that just yet. Unfortunately, I know the trade deadline's right there. I know we're 18 and 22, but there's not enough sample size yet for me to really say that it's broken. And as long as it's not broken, then I just don't see the franchise moving on and going towards a big man. Now, that could change right now. There could be a tweet right now that says Mike Dunleavy traded, I don't know, so-and-so and so-and-so for a big man to match the salaries. But just I just even even the interview with Tom Tobert on KNBR yesterday with with Steve, it still felt like, you know, that's the thing about Steve. He believes in you. He gives you belief. He makes you feel like you're part of the team. That's why there's no locker room dissension. He makes you feel more confident as a player. That's why Clay play better all of a sudden when his whole entire career, he's, you know, hunting shots. And now Clay is not hunting shots anymore. That's because of the nurturing of Steve Kerr. That's just one example. So his interview yesterday with Tom Tobert seems to reinforce that type of culture. And it does not seem like they'd switch the paradigm to finding a big man. But that's my read of it. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. All right, so yeah. So yeah. Um Alfie is giving us the cold, hard truth of pro sports. No doubt. I'm with you. That's why I don't want to, I don't want to worry about it. <laughs> I want to present both sides equally. You can make your own judgments, but I, I really do have to present both sides equally. Also, you're saying getting a trade won't even help us right now. We don't know that. Um, we don't know that, you know, Don Levy and his crew don't have, you know, gigabytes of spreadsheets of what if scenarios. You'd think that they would. So you you making the declaration that there is no trade out there right now, I have to bring you back down to earth. <laughs> I have to slap some sense into you, quite frankly. 
you know, like you can't just be talking like that, you know, let's be real here. Like we're not in the same office as, um, we're not in the same office as, uh, Mike Dunleavy and they very well might be losing sleep every day, you know, two hours of sleep and keeping track of all those spreadsheets. Mike's like, yo, Kirk Lakeham, you got that spreadsheet? You got it? Show me the possibilities on what so-and-so. Give me the updated salary cap table now because I'm on the phone with so-and-so GM. Like, we don't know what's going on. At the same time, it could be dead silence. Maybe they don't do their homework. Maybe they don't have spreadsheets. How would we know? So I don't think we can just judge away and judge away and judge away on everything. Just let it happen. And sit here like I am just waiting to learn. I'm eager to learn. I want to know what Mike Dunleavy was thinking in that process. Because that will teach me more about the game of basketball and how things operate in the NBA. And the funny thing is, you never really know. Like, you think you know everything and then something different happens. And it's like, oh, okay. So, like, the process of learning is never linear. It's up and down and up and up and up and down, 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 up and down, up and down. And it's like, that's you got to enjoy that. So every time I get a chance to learn something about the league, I try to, and it will never be enough. Like I'll never have enough knowledge that I can predict something. And that's the secret of life. That's what the divine is trying to tell you. Stop predicting. Stop thinking every day is going to be the same from this point on but also keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars, as Casey Kasem used to say. Keep your feet on the ground because not everything you wish for is going to come true either. So you might as well enjoy the moment. And wait till I get to the trade scenario that I have for you. Catching up, catching up, catching up. Are the Warriors still in Utah? Yes. Per Connor Letourneau of SF Chronicle, they will fly back tomorrow, I think it was. Or did they say Wednesday? Yeah, tomorrow, I believe, I think. All you got to do is go look it up. Actually, no, you need a subscription to the Chronicle. But I'm pretty sure they are... Did they say Wednesday night? Today's Wednesday, right? So Thursday. Uh, maybe it was Wednesday. For some reason, I'm thinking the article said fly back Wednesday, but I could be wrong. Why would you do that if... I think it's tomorrow. Anyways. You know, I should just look it up. I got it saved on my Safari here. You know what? Let's take a quick restroom break. I'll come back, talk about the actual when they're going to fly back, and then we'll move on to trade scenarios. My bad.
All right, I'm back. All right, how many people did we lose as I went to the restroom? Um, okay. We really need a rim protector. I mean, I think just wait till trade deadline to reassess what Dunleavy is thinking. It's hard to tell right now. All they need is a Dwight Howard type. I, I, oh, by the way, it is, it is Wednesday. They're, they're going to fly back later Wednesday. That's what the article says. Um, so Connor Letourneau, uh, Letourneau wrote that the Warriors would fly back later Wednesday. And we'll see. We'll see uh, what Mike Dunleavy does. And uh, it's it's tough. It's tough to really predict it right now. Okay, so remember when you do trade scenarios, you got to put yourself in the shoes of the other team. You got to go to full nine yards or nine, the full nine, whatever the, the saying goes. You can't just say, oh, yeah, we should trade for so-and-so, you know, like, oh, yeah, we should go out and get, uh, you know, uh, whoever. What's a ridiculous one? Chet Holmgren. We need Chet Holmgren. Uh, why the hell would OKC do that? So it's the same. If you want to trade for DeAndre Ayton, then you've got to go, why the hell would Portland want X in return? And you go to Hoops Hype and you click on the teams involved. Ayton is $32 million, So why would they want CP3? Okay, well expiring contract okay cool i mean but you got to say that you can't just go oh i, I want aiden because then to me to the higher iq type observers of the nba we're kind of going oh, okay where would that come from and did you really think it through hope you thought it through and maybe you did maybe you didn't maybe you did but when you say you're going to trade so and so for so and so then we know you you probably did your homework Um, and then the thing with, uh, I mean, all right. <laughs> exactly right. How about just working on your point of attack defense for crying out loud? <laughs> but anyway, I love that, Cholo. <laughs> Just work on your damn point of attack. Now, speaking of which, perfect segue, Cello. Perfect segue. Because now I'm going to get into my trade scenario that I've only run by one guy. Let me see if Dean texted me back to give his two cents on that. Did Dean say, Rich, what are you thinking? Or did Dean say, you know, that, that sounds intriguing. Let's see if he answers. I know my Laker friend, Mark, my good buddy, Mark, he said, you know, actually, that's a good trade. So, nope, Dean hasn't texted me back. Here, here's the, uh, Dean, I texted to you. All right. We send, <laughs> oh, boy, let, let, me, let me time stamp this on here. 111, 11, Mark. Oh, yeah, the 111, 11, Mark. We send uh, CP3 to Toronto and get Bruce Brown and Otto Porter back. 
the reason why uh, we do that is number one, uh, we get point of attack defense from Bruce Brown, and we get a we get a jack of all trades, uh, possibly an upgrade from CP3 if you consider Brandon Pajemski will handle the ball too. Okay, so hold off on that. Toronto, why the hell would Toronto do this? Well, I don't know. I mean, you you get you get the CP3 contract that you can get rid of, comes off the books. But I get it. The problem is there's a team option for uh, for Bruce Brown if we look at Indiana. So so to the problem with that is when there's a team option, you have to opt in at some point. And maybe we should go to spot track to see what the dates are. Bruce Brown salary. Now, it should be quite obvious. I'm going to take Otto Porter off your hands. He has been a thorn in your side. He's been just injured all the time for you, Masai. You get to get rid of that $9 I think I think they would say, oh, yeah, take Otto. Take him back. I don't want to deal with him anymore. That type of deal, right? We'd be like, oh, yeah, Rick, do your magic, Rick. Please do your magic. So that's what I'm looking at. I'm thinking, you know, and then obviously we'd have to create a roster spot or something. I don't know. But everyone's saying that Masai isn't going to keep Bruce Brown. And uh, I, I don't totally understand that part of it in terms of the team option. But I think you'd, you'd have to opt in, which then now you're, you're literally stuck with, with the next year. For, for that to have, you know, for that to be a tradable contract. So CP3's contract is way more tradable than Bruce Brown's. And that's why Masai would do the deal with us. And I just think it'd be nice to have a hustle guy that gets the rebounds, basically a more seasoned Brandon Pajemski, right? I don't know. Now let's look at the comments. Bruce Brown's too small. True. But we're giving up CP. So Bruce Brown's actually an upgrade in height. Otto Porter's possibly still injured. So, yeah, you know, I just threw that out there to kind of just do a trade, like, like just to shake it up a tiny bit, but not much. You know, Pajemski gets promoted to backup point guard. And uh, Bruce Brown is our, if you can't play defense, if you can't point of attack that guy, I'm putting in Bruce, Bruce Brown, that, that type of thing. Like, at least Bruce Brown will stay in front of so-and-so. Like, despite how small he is, he'll stay in front. And, and he's, he's pretty much got the same type of defensive gamer type of tricks that CP3 has, right? So... You know, you're getting pretty much the same defense back. And on offense, you're not getting a ball handler, but you're getting a cutter and a rebounder. So that's my idea. But I didn't want to do ideas. I just said the other night I didn't want to do ideas. But the fact that all the writers are saying, oh, Masai's not keeping Bruce Brown around, that got me thinking. It got me thinking. Plus, We'd already been on the phone with Masai, so there's kind of the warm contact already. And and also Otto Porter, man, you know, sentimental. There's a little sentimental factor in there that's probably not logical at all. I have no idea how injured or not Otto Porter is, but, I mean, that's a hell of a locker room pickup. I mean, pat me on the back, man, for that one, right? I mean, come on. You need to pick me up in the locker room? Boom. I just solved that one in one stroke, right? So that's my idea. I'm really waiting to see what Dean thinks about it. But let's look at the Bruce Brown contract. Uh, deadline, 629. You're not, you're not going to, you're not going to, uh, you're not going to renounce the option. Like Masai would have to opt in by 
by June to be able to trade that. And maybe Bruce Brown doesn't fit them right now. I don't know. I guess I guess he fits all teams. That's the beauty of Bruce Brown. He fits everybody. I think the CP contract does give them more optionality. I don't know. Dwight Powell. Ah, that's not bad. Dwight Powell. Not bad. Not bad. Are they willing to give them up? Let's go back to the hoops hype one like here, Dallas. What's Dwight Powell making? It's only four million. I don't know how you. Yeah, that's that's not that easy to do. Got to come up with more. <laughs> What's uh, Wigs? Thirty-two or twenty-eight? I forget. Twenty-four. So twenty-four mil versus four mil. You got a lot more homework. <laughs> And that's those are the steps that you take. It's that's that's less of me. I'm not making fun of Johnson. I'm just saying these are the steps that you take to try and uh, understand uh, how you got to make these deals work. As far as I know, yeah. I mean, unless one of us is under the tax, under the luxury tax, teams under the tax have a lot more flexibility. I'm going to assume Dallas is into the tax. Wow, I really ran out of characters in the description, huh? Sheesh. All right, so Bruce is targeted... Kuzma, Isaiah Stewart, Caruso. Juan Toscano Anderson is on a 10-day. Okay. Yeah, he's on a 10-day. We'll see how that we'll see how that goes. Uh, I'd probably understand it more if I knew what the Kings did on a day-to-day -day basis. Denver might try to get Bruce Brown back. Yeah, a la GP2 in the Warriors. Yeah, in terms of the rotation, I would I would just take uh what we had with CP3 and replace CP3 with Pajemski. And then what we had with Pajemski, replace him with Bruce Brown. How many minutes does Bruce Brown play right now? I mean, would he be happy with that? I don't know that he'd be happy with that, quite frankly, because, you know, that wasn't a ton of minutes. But, you know, he doesn't really get to say. I mean, at some point, he's the type of guy that will just do whatever it takes to win. But. You know, I I, I don't know. <laughs> I just I just thought of that, and I and I thought that it made sense for all the teams involved. So, let's see how many minutes he's playing. 
you gotta you gotta respect you know the the guy himself you know 29 minutes a game um how many minutes was Pajemski playing when CP was around? Probably not that much. Probably 24 minutes or something. Uh, look at game log. Last five games. Game logs. Did they switch this around? That's a decent amount, actually. Actually, we should look at... Okay, just look at the average. Fine. Just look at the average. Average minutes of Brandon Pajemski is... Uh, man, did they switch things around? I don't know. That's an ad that's getting in the way or what. Where are my averages, man? <laughs> What the hell? They changed this. <laughs> there it is. Oh, per game. that's because he's a rookie. There's only one. 24 minutes a game. How about CP3? Chris Paul played. Ah, you know, Bruce Brown might just love being in the Warriors facility and the Warriors culture for $22 million a year, that's not bad in and of itself. Despite if you're going to lose six minutes a game. And CP was at 27.6. So, Bruce, you'd have to cut down your minutes by a little bit. I don't know. So anyways, Bruce Morrow says, uh, the other Bruce says uh, he wants to target Kuzma Stewart Caruso. All right. Something out there. What else? Everybody wants Caruso. Let's see how much he's making. Chicago. 10 mil. 10 mil. Oh, yeah, and then there's always Boyan. Getting through these one by one. I'm, I'm putting these obviously in the comments for later. So it takes a while to type it all in. Oh, God, three-team scenario. Oh, man. Yeah, I don't know about the three-team one. Uh, there's so many possibilities. Um, so I go back to the, has there ever been a three team trade that was predicted by somebody? I don't think there has ever been one. So 
whatever three team deal you just thought of ain't gonna happen <laughs> but if it does then we'll tip our cap and then we'll say lucky guess no nah. And Bruce is saying, oh, uh, Bruce Brown's not going to have any minutes or uh, we, we want to play Moody, not Bruce Brown. And to that I say um, that you, you'd, you definitely want Bruce Brown if we're protecting a seven-point lead going down in the last two minutes, play some defense. But, yeah, you know, yeah, it's still getting his minutes cut. Gonna have to disagree with you on that deck tabs. I mean, I'm not saying that the Warriors need this or that. I'm just saying I don't see the Warriors doing that until they do it. And isn't the dynamic score JK? What what dynamic score are you looking for? DeMar DeRozan? I can't even think of like what. What example are you, uh, what's the example? Who, who is this dynamic scorer? There's only been one dynamic scorer that's worked with the Warriors, but his name was Kevin Durant. So you're looking for the next Kevin Durant. I don't know, like it was supposed to be the, 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 the D-Lo salary slot, which became the Wiggins salary slot. And the, that, that role morphed into rebound and defense rather than be the secondary dynamic scorer and rebound and defense as KD was. There's only one KD. There's only so many guys that are dynamic scorers out there. And those guys are going to have gigantic contracts. Wiggins, we paid market value. So his contract dwindled down from a level of KD, a max from five years ago to what it is now. And so that depreciated. That That's a salary slot that depreciated. Therefore, we cannot get a dynamic score. That's that. It's, it's just, that's the way the salary cap is. Just look at our salary cap, plain and simple. Now you could possibly package, you know, Wiggins and CP for some guy, Donovan Mitchell or whatever it is. I don't, I don't even know what he makes. But I'm just assuming. Okay, I guess that's within the realm of possibility. Yeah. But remember, the CP salary slot really came from the homegrown, uh, call it inflation of Jordan Poole.
So yeah, my advice is uh, don't get all strung up about it. You can't you can't predict it. Nobody can, especially uh, randos on on Twitter making up stuff and you know saying our team sucks and stuff. It may be true, but you still can't predict it. So we can't predict that there'll be a trade, and we can't predict that there won't be a trade. So why bother? That's kind of the the theme for tonight uh in terms of the trade stuff but you know we had a little entertainment kind of you know we we'll gotta we we'll gotta check that box just a little bit of entertainment Again, uh, the other theme of tonight is that there there just hasn't been enough sample size, and I know that's not entertaining. You wanna you wanna say one or the other. You wanna say our team is great, or you wanna say our team sucks. Otherwise, it's no fun. But like, number one, we can't predict trades. We we really can't. So you could go on and on and on and on about. This or that trade, that's good, that's bad. It really doesn't matter because you you don't work for the Warriors. And then the second thing is, um, but yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll we'll do we'll check that box, we'll scratch that itch because it's entertainment. But then the other thing is that um, I just really don't think there's been enough sample size with Draymond. And I know the average fan is super impatient. Fine, we we know that, right? Oh, okay. Let me be impatient. I mean, but I'm trying to give you information. And I think you just need to at least give it until January 5th. That's eight more games. I'm asking you to be patient for eight games. Eight. And even then, that's not enough sample size. But we kind of have no choice because if we truly suck on January 5th, and we don't do anything by January 8th, we're stuck with that same team the rest of the way for 30 more games. But if we play better, then there's a ray of hope. Or we can do an ancillary move, like I mentioned. Unfortunately, it, it, you just have to wait until Dunleavy does something or the trade deadline passes with nothing happening January 8th. Then we can go, oh, okay. You know, all right, I see where we're going. And then you can go, oh, Draymond last eight games sucks. So we're doomed. Forget it. You know, let's look at off season trades. This is that like one step at a time.
and it always just comes back to well you know, i still i still would rather not root for any, any other team this is still my team that i want to root for this is still my team that i'm i'm going to try and get joy from try and get gratitude from you got to return to that spot if you can't return to that spot there's a whole other app for people who can't return to that spot. And like the whole J. Cole thing, if you're going to go to that spot, I don't want to be part of that conversation. Like I, I got better things to do, honestly. Like, you know, there's plenty of other things in life to do and to be grateful for. But for me, it's it's always been the Warriors. And that's what I'm here to remind people of. And maybe maybe uh, Decky passing away is a reminder of that. Hello, guys. Hello. You know. Excuse me, but at the end of the day, you know, we're all mortal beings. So Decky is gonna leave a legacy. And decades from now, decades, decky, <laughs> decades from now, decky from now, decades from now, we'll look back at this team and we'll remember all the good parts of it. Actually, some of us on here might even remember some of the bad parts. Oh, remember 2023, 20, 24, when Draymond got suspended and this and that, and we'll laugh at it. And we'll go, oh yeah, that was a blip. Or or we'll go, oh yeah, that was that was when we fell off a cliff. Or we'll go, oh yeah, I remember when when Decky passed away and then the guys played inspired. Or maybe not, but like, you know. You got to find the gratitude for for every moment. You just have to. Otherwise, you're just going to be unhappy all the time. You're going to feel entitled. And all the other teams right now, when, if there's one thing consistent about all the other pundits that are not Warriors pundits, is that they look at, they look at what they see on Twitter and they go, my goodness, that Warrior fan base is spoiled on this app of course that's not us because we're not on that app they're talking about those warriors fans addicted to the shitter app they're incredibly spoiled and entitled yep you don't want to be one of those guys you want to walk around your whole life saying oh i, I should have got that and i should have got that and you know this guy backstabbed me, so I wasn't able to get that. You don't want to live your life like that. Trust me. I have plenty of reason to, to live my life that way. You know how many people have stabbed me in the back? Well, actually, I'll say zero because I learned something from every one of them, and I wouldn't change a thing. That's where me and Festus actually diverge. You know, his Rebuilding the Beast podcast for... I've said this before. I love Festus and I wish him the most success, but I can't stand it when he goes and the first thing he asks everybody is, what would you tell your former self? What would you tell your younger self? What would you change? I hope someday he interviews me. Bruh, Festus, I wouldn't change a damn thing because it brought me to this point in time and I love this point in time. I love me. I love everybody that's in my life. I love you guys. I love my team. I love Decky. 
winning and losing. Heck, we won four titles, man. There's going to be some fans out there right now. There's going to be some people that's equally grateful with me and they didn't win any championships. So, you know, you always got to go back to the 64,000 foot view. And today of all days, Decky passing should be a reminder to us. Let's get the trades, trade scenarios out of there. But I'll answer you guys in the comments. Good point on uh, BP and CP. Yeah, we got to bring it back to uh, love for the team. Thanks, Robbie. You know what's funny? I didn't even read Phil's trade scenario. I had to go scroll back up. I didn't even read it because it's like, nah, <laughs> my brain is fried. I didn't even want to do this Bruce Brown thing, but I wanted auto back. So, you know, that's my, that's my, that's really why I came up with it. <laughs> I have an affinity towards auto, man. You saw me when auto was getting his ring. I couldn't stop clapping probably bothered your ears man i love auto porter man that's that's really that's and that's that's probably why we won't get him <laughs> you want you want a guy so bad sentimentally you're a fan like come on think logically he's injured blah 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 you know bruce brown is this that the other thing this ain't gonna work blah 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 yeah i know i know so then you get back to uh you get back to, okay, let's let Mike do his job. Oh, thanks, Deck. Today is January 17th. Yep, there's still some time. Yep. Eight games doesn't feel like, feels like uh, eight games is faster than that. Huh? I'm, I'm pretty sure I counted it right. Eight games will get you to February 5th, I believe. I'm not sure. Oh, thanks, man. Catching up to your comments. Yeah, screenshot that, man. Amy! Thanks for the update, Nicole. Hey, Arbel. Thanks to Arbel and Nicole keeping me updated on Instagram because, you know, sometimes I stay up pretty late and I wake up pretty late and I might miss some news and they hit me up and I woke up, saw that and I go, oh, man. Ah, <laughs> uh, Amy just came on and I'm I'm kind of ready to go. What else do you guys want to talk about? We talked about takeaways. 
I think one of the key takeaways of the Siakam trade really is that it seems like we're going to keep Moody and JK like for real now. Like it's the fact that w- that somebody else got Siakam for what they got. It just feels like, oh, okay. It's like they, they paid a price that was commensurate with a Wiggs Moody or Wiggs JK deal. We kind of already knew. We kind of already knew JK wasn't going to be dealt. I mean, we're watching JK make these moves on screen the other night, and we're saying, nah, we ain't trading that. Hell no. Moody, on the other hand, you'd figure is expendable in all of this just to make the team better. And even if it's a risk to get Siakam, and but if we make a run in the, uh, if we get to the Western Conference Finals game six or seven, then maybe Siakam would be cool with an extension over here and we have his bird rights, blah, blah, blah. Well, you don't have to worry about that anymore. In fact, you can kind of hang your hat on the fact that, all right, Moody really has some value with us. Also, I'm glad we talked about, I'm glad I circuitously came back to Moody because, okay, anytime you have to talk about Moody, anytime you talk about Moody, who else do you have to talk about? Drum roll. Let's hear it. Let's see who guesses it in the comments. First, it's a race. Anytime you talk about Moody, who do you need to talk about? Do you need a hint? Mentality wins that contest, even though it was kind of a blind guess contest because they play the same position. Moody and Clay play the shooting guard. So we're we're willing to keep Moody. I mean, we're kind of, we're putting two and two together, maybe unnecessarily. Maybe I'm going too far, but there's uh, this is the last topic. Let's get to two hours, call it a night, and let's talk about Clay. So I, it's just like the fact that we think Moody is a long-term asset. I mean, is that a stretch? I mean, it was kind of black or white. Like Moody gets traded, Moody doesn't get traded. Oh, he doesn't get traded means we are – we are into Moody long term. Is that okay? Can we can we make that link? Can we can we hit the dominoes and they all fall to that? Well, this is a positivity channel, so it's certainly a positive thing to think that. All right. You know, I'm I'm just going out of my way to have good vibes. I, I admit, I just really haven't thought about it much, but. You know, maybe that means, you know, and, and as far as Clay, I swear, like every indication I get, Clay's going to remain a warrior, whether it's from his dad, whether it's from other people in a circle, uh, whether it's from um, just other reports out there. Like, there's just zero indication Clay is going to leave or. You know, just just negotiate and go, all right, sure, we'll pay you what we're paying Draymond. I mean, whatever's fair, just pay him whatever's fair at the time. I mean, I think all sides can agree. We'll pay you what you deserve on the day you sign. Why not? How who can say no to that? And I I think right now he's worth no more than Draymond. Of course. Draymond needs to play like Draymond. He can't get injured. He can't get suspended. He can't get ejected. If he does any of those three, then he's playing less than his value. Injuries out of con- his control, unfortunately, but it's the truth. If you're not playing Draymond, Draymond, Mr. Green, if you're not playing, 
you are you are not worth what we're paying you. Plain and simple. Now, if he's playing and he's worth what we're paying him, then Clay is not worth more than that. And that's fine because I think that fits on the salary cap table. You know, you you bump this down to 25. We'll figure it out. I mean, the salary cap keeps going up. The second apron keeps going up. We get a pretty decent two guard in the league for 25 mil. That's fair. If the season ended today, I think that's fair. Or 20, you know, go down a bit, maybe a little bit less than Draymond as, as we've seen 18 and 22 with Draymond, not playing like 11, uh, only playing 11 of those games. Uh, you know, just look at his, his record compared to Clay's record, plus minus whatever. Uh, I think, I think you'd probably come to the conclusion that you can't get paid more than Draymond Clay. I mean, if you really want to be a warrior, then do what's fair. I mean, go ahead, go, you know, look out in the marketplace, but dude, I mean, we got a second apron to worry about and you know, it just wins and losses and, I think that's fair and you know whatever the market is so bottom line i mean like you look at the salary cap and you go clay at 25 million for the next three years let's say uh option over here just like draymond and then you know we'll figure out staff when we figure out staff there's stuff ain't leaving right and 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 Then you look at Moody and you go, oh, there is a bridge to the future, especially we didn't trade him yet. And like, okay, you know, I I could see, you know, Moody taking over long term out here. And I like it. There's your two timelines. Now we're back to two timelines. (laughs) And that what does that teach you? It's just narratives. It's just labels. It's this isn't two timelines, it's basketball, it's team management in the modern era. There's no you know, go ahead, label it whatever the hell you want. Two timeline, one time. Who cares what you label it? That's just for fun, that's entertainment, that's a narrative. Like he's playing well. He's playing so well and Clay is no longer at the 43. He's not playing at the 43 million level. I mean, it's just natural basketball happening. So this one going to be bigger out here, you know, sign that extension. Obviously Kaminga's going to be a big number. I think it starts to balance out and then you, you see how we transition and you're kind of like, yeah, man, Mo- Moody can start. Don't you think Moody can start? Right. Anybody on here think Moody can't start, right? I mean, that's what you want to, and like tomorrow and the next day, that's a problem. If he was healthy, he's injured now. But so next week, that's a problem because Clay might come out and forget to box out or take a wild shot. And for whatever reason, Moody doesn't get to play. But everyone on here knows Moody can start. He can start in the NBA. We know that. And isn't that a good thought to go into the future? I think think that's great, actually. And that's, you know, that's Clay betting on himself is fine because that's what ballers do. If I were 33 years old coming off two surgeries, I would have bet on myself too. You always bet on yourself. Of course. I mean, 
Clay's made enough money to to show up at a car dealership and be able to buy any car that he wants. You know, like it's a drop of the hat. Like there's no monetary ambition. It's pride, you know? So, by the way, <laughs> certain dealership out there pretty happy a few days ago. Uh, anyway, that's all I can say. <laughs> uh, that's, that's a little nugget reward for those of you who stayed on with me to the 158 mark. Just a little fun one. Who cares? Could happen any other day. Anyway. Um, yeah, man. I mean, I... <laughs> Siakam not coming to the Warriors for some reason made me very like feel good about our squad in the future, you know? Yeah, on this, uh, I I agree, but then also um, just remember that uh, one of the tools that agents use in negotiation is is the stats, and so that's probably not going to help out Clay all that much. But uh, that's that's just don't worry about Clay being a warrior. He's going to be a warrior. Bottom line. Because they gotta, they gotta use those in comps. It's always about comps, a comparable. This guy got paid that much, therefore Clay should get paid, you know, this much. And that guy's a shooting guard, and this guy, my guy Clay, is a shooting guard, and you know he shot whatever, and Clay shot whatever. So that's the negotiation. But like, it's it's just a matter of, hey Joe, Joe Lacob, man, don't screw me over. And is Joe going to screw him over? I don't think so. Like Joe gets it in terms of legacy and stuff. So I have zero concerns that Clay will be a warrior. And so whatever you hear out there, come on. They don't know. You, you don't, you don't follow the warriors every day. You don't, you don't keep an eye on Michael Thompson's tweets. You don't, you don't know rich who knows certain people. That you know, I, I just I just need your faith on that. That's all I can say because if I say any more, then I'm gonna get in trouble. You know what I'm saying? So uh, you know, I just don't worry about clay, man. All right, so let's talk about that. Johnson is saying that's the one part with Moody that that really bugs me. Uh, it, it just all comes back to the Trinity, right? I, I wrote it in here. There's some of it in there too, but can Draymond solve the season of humility? It's all in there. Um So it's called uh, Get the Ball to Steph Clay Ecosystem. And the frustration you have for Moody ought to be the exact same frustration you have for Kaminga. Because when I see, like I said before, when I see Steph getting top locked, and then I see a pick by Steph for Draymond, reverse pick, right? Because Vince Williams is playing him the other side of the ball, the other side of the hoop, which is goes against all intuition, but is a counter to our actions 
because we're all coming around the ball. And the easiest way to counter that is the top lock. But then you're going to have to worry about our counter to the counter. Just put JK in. JK would have finished that layup. Draymond did not. He could not rise over GG Jackson, very long defender. JK would have. He would have dunked in GG's face. But we didn't do that because it's not a seven game series. And, you know, you figure you figure Steph isn't going to dribble off his foot and throw the ball to the wrong team and things like that. Like it gets us out of rhythm. It gets us having doubt. So the same frustration that you had for man, can we get the ball to Kaminga? Maybe we ain't scoring. Steph is throwing the ball left and right. Give the ball to Kaminga. Sorry. That's 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 the thing. Is that from Joe Lacob to Mike Dunleavy to Steve Kerr to the coaching staff to Steph Curry to Draymond and Clay. Although Clay is always, yeah, okay, I'll do whatever. It all comes back to get the ball to Steph or Clay. That's it. Like to a fault, and that's the fault. That's the frustration that you feel. Mine isn't so much frustration. I just I just deal with it. It's just, okay, I get it. And you know what? Okay, Lake of Dunleavy and Steve, Kerr, I get it. There, there hasn't been enough sample size to prove to me that that ecosystem of getting the ball to Steph or Clay is, is actually broken. Now, if if everybody top blocked us and not every team has that personnel and not every you know, we'll be better next time. So if next time we play Memphis, which is coming up, they try to do that, we're gonna have counters and we'll see. And it's probably gonna still involve Draymond, Clay, and Steph. The counter is is not to abandon Steph, Clay, and Draymond for somebody else that you have to in basketball and probably most things in humanity, probably most things in humanity, such as the invention of the telephone, the invention of satellites, the invention of traffic lights, the invention of stop signs. It happened because Something was working over and over and over again. Something was working well until it didn't work well. You know, you think about it. How many, how many people have to die in San Francisco before implementing the European style of bike lanes? How many people had to die? So then you go back and you go, come on, government officials. How come you couldn't have predicted more people would have died and then you would have implemented the European style of saving more lives uh, in the bike lane sooner? Because that's, that's how Americans think. That's just the way it is. Until centuries pass by and we're finally figuring out how some of the ways that we, we work some of the subconscious things that we do are, are probably wrong and we've got to rethink the whole thing. I mean, everybody knows our political system is, is whacked. It's whacked. I mean, everybody agrees to that. Even the people on Trump's side would, would agree to that. Is, is it changing anytime soon? Like these, these things that change it's because of, certain habitual things about Americans. And so whatever that is, it's the same thing of what we're going through right now is why is Steve so stubborn? Why does he keep trying to get the ball to Steph, Clay, and Draymond? I mean, because that's how everybody is. Everybody in the NBA would be doing the same thing. Why do you think every coach in the NBA fears the Splash Brothers still. It's like, uh, and I literally have this on our YouTube channel, right? Just go to our YouTube channel 
and uh, go look for uh, any given uh, opposing coach. Who was the last one? Let's see. The last opposing coach to take the podium is right here. Uh, oh, you know, this one, Adrian Griffin was talking about BP, so that one doesn't count. But talking about the Warriors in general, show me a coach. Show me a coach. Um, Malone? What did Malone talk about? I don't recall that being one of them, but uh, doesn't ring a bell. Um, who? Spolstra. There we go. Spolstra. Even Bam. Uh, and he called Steph 30. He called Steph's nickname by our nickname, our locker room nickname for Steph. 30 can get hot in any time. So, so wait a minute. The Miami Heat are, are scared to death of Steph and Clay getting going. And that's not the only team. There's been teams in here somewhere, too. I just can't remember exactly where. Why are they so stubborn then? That's how we are. It's a, that's just, you know, you talk about light years. There's no such thing as light years. Lakeup can only do so much with his technology of the capital ca catapult vests, the hiring of Rick Celebrini, the hiring of the analytics, the, uh, analytics person, the, the building of Chase to make it a cash cow so that you kind of don't have to worry about luxury taxes and whatnot until they invented the thing called second apron, which was to counter you. I mean, okay, whatever. That's light years, but you're no, you're no light years ahead in terms of basketball thinking. Like, you know, I mean, they catch up pretty quick. Like they're going to close the gap pretty quick. You, you think, you think split action is all that light years ahead. I mean, light years is like, a couple of years but the thing is is we got kd so it stressed it out and people think that you know it was some amazing you know light years thing i mean no it was kd man it's, it's like we it was it was steph curry's contract only being 12 million a year uh, i mean that allowed kd and just the timing of it so we got lucky but like light years doesn't really you know i mean it's a myth right like Sam Presti could get up there and go, oh, yeah, we're light years ahead of everybody. Check out all my first round draft picks, man. We're light years ahead. Oh, come on, man. No, man, you worked for those. It was nothing like, you know, you had some gimmick or you had a trick or you you purposely went that route and you got Shea and then you got Chet Holmgren. And that's great. Hooray for you and, and Jalen Will. Both Jalen Williams turned out, you know, higher value than where you drafted them. Like, you know, light years. Like, you 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 earned that, man. Like, so it's like when you say light years, like, oh, I, oh, I can't do that. I don't know how to do that. No, nah, man. If we really had to, we, we, could, we could implement the Sam Presti strategy if we really had to. A any team could. I mean, they hire the right people. And I mean, you look at Detroit, man. I mean, you know what doesn't get talked about Detroit? Kate Cunningham's been injured, man. I mean, that's why they suck. Come on. And then the start of this season, you know, oh, 28 losses in a row. I mean, come on. They were all injured. What do you expect? It's, it's not like they're total dunces over there. Like they don't know how to assemble a team. They were all injured, especially your star player. I mean, come on. Like, just like our 15 and 40 season. So there, there's no, like, magic sauce. It's we are who we are. We're Americans, and we, we, we have these habits. And so when we ride a dynasty till the wheels fall off, we really do ride a dynasty till the wheels fall off there's no it's not like a video game because you got to deal with the guys you got to deal with the egos just like steve said on the podium there would be a revolt i mean quite honestly we're sitting here 
you know, arm's length away or greater. And we're saying, you need to run plays for JK. You need to run plays for JK. You know what? If you spent every day going to the Warriors practice facility with the team, if you did that every single day since training camp, you would know. You would go, that's preposterous. There's no way you could implement get the ball to Kaminga sometimes versus get the ball to Steph, Clay, and Draymond. That's what I've been trying to teach everybody. Like that's, that is the root of all your frustration. So you either accept that as a human being because you understand how humans are, especially Americans, and how we've developed the stuff that we've developed. Even, you know, the example of the bike lanes in San Francisco, that, that's it. Right. <laughs> you could have saved so many lives, but you didn't. And more lives had to die. Until you finally implemented it. And that's the that's just how we do it in America. That's cultural, man. Unless Dean has come up with some, you know, I asked Dean to look into the thing about basketball dynasties. But like you look at the last dance, they just talked about this. Jerry Krause's widow gets booed and and it's like yesterday tom tolbert asked steve kerr about it i want to transcribe that and put it on the website for you but like jerry kraus was like yeah we're not yeah uh, that's it that's as far as we can go and and tom asked steve he goes well don't you think you could could have gone more steve goes no we were done that's all we had that was that was everything we had we gave it our all I mean, sure, Michael's the superhuman. He can go another year. But do all of us, oh, man, three in a row, we're done. Like, we're spent. That was it. So Kraus broke it up. So you either go until the wheels fall off or you, you go before that and you scrap it completely and, and you kind of rebuild. And that's what Kraus did. And they hate him for that now. So it was kind of interesting yesterday when Steve said, yeah, we, we were done. There's no way we could have won four in a row. And, and that's just how we are. So you're, you're either going to just perpetually be frustrated by that and be mad at Steve, which, by the way, you should be mad at Joe Lacob and Mike Dunleavy. Not that I'm advocating you be mad at them. I'm advocating that you not be mad and just understand that is that is the American way. The American way is to ride a dynasty till the wheels fall off. And that means being proven that Draymond can't get Steph and Clay open. The moment he can't and there's enough proof, then we'll change it. But they might surprise me. Tomorrow, they might implement a, a pet play for Kaminga. You got four days of practice coming up. None of those four days can you fly back to Utah because Utah's out of town. I figured that one out today. Like, we can't make up the Utah game in those four days. So you're going to practice for probably three of those days. So um, you're, you're going to need a mental break from, from Decky passing and, and just – traveling so much so saturday is definitely an off day they'll probably go to the niners game quite quite frankly and then sunday monday tuesday we'll figure it out but like that's an opportunity to go you know instead of waiting till instead of trying to see you know with the trade deadline looming whether steph clay and dre can can actually play well on a consistent basis Let's let's put JK into the mix for a pet play. That's an opportunity. I don't see that happening, but you know, it could. So I could be wrong, but I think I'm really the only guy out there saying that like this this is how this is how it is. When when you have something that works, Americans will stick to what works. And that's why the good old American saying, I mean, that's got to be an American saying, right? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's an American saying. Now, if it's not American, let me know. Because I would be surprised. But that that's a good old American saying.
and they ain't gonna they ain't gonna fix this until it's broke so i think you guys should all shelve your frustration and get to understand and be curious about why certain things happen or don't happen and i'm giving you the probable reason i could be wrong i'm not there every day no reporter is you just really got to get it from the inside from somebody and no one's no one's going to reveal that plus they're too busy they're game planning the game film for the next game they got other fish to fry right now like and I, I wouldn't want to bug him. Yo, know, Chris DeMarco, you got you got to tell me why have you not run a play for JK? You got to tell me why. No, I'm not going to bug him. Like my friendship with him, how however distant it is, he used to play in my basketball league. That's how I know him. So we've known each other for over a decade, but it's not like we hang out or talk a lot. In fact, lots of times when I text him, I don't get a reply, but I don't want to bug him with that. What Rich is some some dude always trying to get some scoop and he's annoying. I don't want to be that guy. I don't need that. Like, so you just come up with the possible reasons. And there's always reasons, you know. It's the same thing as out there. Literally two blocks from my house or three or four. Like homeless guy might be a little aggressive on some random day to me. I went up to a homeless guy and I said, Hey, I got this soda and this bag of chips from a friend, but I don't eat or drink this stuff here. You have it. He goes, no, I don't want it. I want cash. And I'm like, Oh, okay. I literally don't have cash. I would consider maybe giving it to you, but you you might not use it for the right things. It, it might, it, I don't know what you're using cash for. Why would you want cash to feed an addiction to drugs? I don't know. But at some point you got to have empathy for the guy, right? That's, that's how you should be as a human. You can't be like, Oh no, no, I'm too busy. I'm too stressed out. I gotta, I gotta go earn my paycheck and, F him, like, whatever. Like, you know, I try to be nice to him and give him some food and he rejected me. No, my ego's, my ego's hurt, blah, 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 whatever. Nah. Nah, man. It's whatever it is. Okay, you don't want that food. All right, I'll find somebody who, who wants it. And oddly enough, somebody wanted it at a Starbucks and he wasn't homeless. He was just hungry. I said, yeah, God, take it, man. You're hungry. It's all good. I don't I don't need that stuff. And you do. And you need to, you know, your body's telling you it's hungry. So take care of that. But like the homeless guy, like I don't have any grudge against him. Like, oh, this homeless guy, you know, all he wants is cash. Like, you know, there's no need for me to go, but you're homeless or this or that. It's just like, no, have empathy for the guy. He he sleeps in a parking garage. And he he wants to do certain things his way. I see him at the Starbucks all the time. He brings his cart and then he he gets ready for the day. He has extra things of water. He might even order a coffee. And he's he's part of the community. So I understand him. I get it. And we coexist. So why be so much in denial of Steve Kerr? Isn't it more interesting to understand what he's thinking? He probably doesn't even know why. But you listen to that Tom Tolbert interview on KNBR yesterday. He goes, I believe in Wiggins. I really do. And you kind of go, man, that that guy cares, man. Like, I want to play for Steve Kerr someday type of deal, right? You start to understand, like, oh, wow. This guy is a really cool human being, honestly, and he'll take all the hits. He'd rather everybody hate him on, on Twitter than Wiggins. And whatever that reason is, he believes in Wiggins. And it's like, come on, be a human being, man. Like, have some 
have a heart, open your heart to that. I think that's sweet. I think that's pretty damn awesome. And when I say that's sweet, I even mean from a masculine perspective, like I will walk through a wall for Steve Kerr after that. He goes up there and he said he believed in me and I know I'm playing like shit this year. Who knows what Wiggins is going through? And Steve is going to bat for me. You know, he's saying I had a good game last game. I don't think I had a good game. I myself, Andrew Wiggins doesn't feel like he had a good game. And my coach is up there telling Tom Tolbert to KNBR in the Bay Area that he believes in me, man. Damn. That should be the story, but everybody is addicted to narratives and, and outrage and stuff. So they feed their addiction. They don't want to hear that. They're too busy, uh, stressed out in their lives, They're trying to survive, whatever it may be. But we're not. We're able to see all sides of humanity, unlike every other place on the Internet. I'm literally the only guy that covers the Warriors that gives you that human side. There's nobody else. Nobody. Nobody's going to go bat, go to bat for Steve Kerr. Nobody's going to go to bat for the franchise. Nobody's going to say, hey, maybe, maybe the reason why we're so dead set on Steph, Clay, and Draymond is because that's just, that's just what we do in basketball and in life. Maybe that's why. Like, I'm, I'm willing to give the benefit of the doubt just to observe and just kind of marvel at how interesting humanity is. So I just I just do it differently. And I'm glad there's just a handful of you guys, 42 concurrence, but like it's better than nothing. It's me thinking all these things to myself. I'd be cool with it too. Like because humanity's cute cool like that. Like, oh, oh yeah, that's interesting. Oh, that is how we are. Oh, I wonder why. I wonder why we're like that. I wonder if there's other examples of that. Oh, that's pretty cool, actually, you know? Hmm, that's interesting. Maybe I can learn something about this. Maybe I can use this as a, as a learning point for my own life, or maybe not. Maybe, maybe the whole, you know, the whole reason for being, raison d'etre in French, terrible French, is 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 to focus on the moment for steve kerr the moment is man wiggins is struggling man i gotta support the guy i gotta believe in wiggins otherwise he'll be stuck there i gotta do something that's the moment other people's moments are based on the result so if you go look at the process of things, that's the only way to look at things like that and, and seeing the human side of things is to look at the process, the story, how you got there. That's, that's really the amazing part. I mean, but media is all, you know, no one wants to hear the life of, you know, someone they've never heard of. They want to hear the the history of uh, Kanye West or, you know, Taylor Swift and how she got together with Travis Kelsey or something like that. Like they're they're focused on the result, and they're not focused on just just live your life every moment by moment. And we're we're looking at the Warriors day by day. Day by day, there's something. And today was was a sad thing. But it brought us back to some perspective. I mean, like, Decky passing for me to end up here two hours and 27 minutes later talking about some of these perspectives that I, I really hadn't processed quite yet until this moment when I could finally explain it, what was going on in, in my mind. And 
you know, that that's kind of the new me. Like instead of the, the previous me would have been like, oh, Johnson Weaver Smith, come on, this, that, come on, just just trust Steve. But I'm I'm looking, trying to go further, just trying to evolve even more. So not only are are you generally keeping things on a positive vibe, but go the extra mile. All right. Yeah, I get that. The So that's where we are. Like, thank you, Johnson Weaver Smith, for bringing it up. You brought up that the Moody situation is weird. And then I, I tried to take that and open it up and look at it from other angles. And hopefully I got you to, you know, think about it a little bit more. End of super long diatribe, possibly the longest diatribe I've ever done. If you want to call it a diatribe. But yeah, I, you know, I, I get it. I get being, I get being frustrated about not throwing the ball to JK, even though Steph did that in Chicago, which I was so joyous, so joyous of. And, um, Oops. Steph actually wanted to pass the ball to JK and he did and got an and one and he did that. Oh, and then they caught a photo of that. So, I mean, there, there was, there was a glimmer of hope that uh, we would, we would uh, look at JK as, as a solution the thing is, is I don't, I don't really want to be frustrated. I don't like the feeling of frustration. Like it's, it's a stress mechanism. It makes you feel like you need to solve a problem. Go solve it now. Your body's frustrated. Your brain is telling you you're frustrated. Something is wrong. Go solve it. No, nah. <laughs> nah, I don't want that. It's not for me to solve, right? So like I take this frustration and I turn it into curiosity. I go, hmm, that's interesting. Probably not what I, I would have done. Am I sure that I wouldn't have done that? You know, now I have my doubts because I'm an American. I embrace American values. And the way that America works is a lot of people have to die riding their bikes before something changes for that. And so would I have done the same? You know, hopefully not. You know, would I would I implement JK in my offense right now? Is there a reason why it isn't happening? You're curious. You're like, maybe it really is difficult to change the culture like that given the, the dynamics of the competitive nature of basketball and what goes on in locker rooms. And I have some semblance of that, having coached basketball teams, having there's there's been, you know, Vegas tournament. I had luckily, just luckily, I had the keys to my friend's house. He let me stay there. So I had the whole team stay there. You know, they're on a budget, you know, guys, we got free lodging, man. And, you know, everybody's in the same house and we can talk about strategies and stuff. And believe me, I did it wrong. Like, I didn't know what I was doing. Go around the room and and talk about what you're not doing right and what you could do better. Nah, I learned the hard way that that doesn't make your team play better. So whatever Steve's doing right now, way better than what I thought was the right thing then. And then I, I learned hats off to Mike Hicks. Mike Hicks out there in the Bay. I remember one time, separate tournament. I've used that. I've used that house a couple of times. Thank you, Ariel and Anna for letting me use your Vegas house a couple of times. They probably didn't even know I did that. 
they probably thought it was just me, but I had my whole damn team there because it'd be good. Save some money all around and uh, have, have a team meeting right there. I wouldn't have to herd cats. And so Mike goes, hey, Rich, man, I know, I know you want to bond the team and everything, but dude, I mean, we want to go out. We want to go out and go to the club, man. And it's like, oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. My bad. My bad. Go go do your thing, man. You know, you got to get ready at 9 p.m., you know, to to then get all showered up. You know, one shower for for 10 guys takes a while, you know. Actually, what probably wasn't nine o'clock is you know you probably got to start getting ready seven eight o'clock, and we just had a game at five o'clock, so we can't talk about basketball. And he's like, "Yo, Rich, man, we're out in Vegas here, man. We we got to scratch that itch, man. We got to go clubbing. When that means all of us need to take our separate showers now. Bye, Rich." I'm like, oh, I thought we were gonna go over game tape. For the team we're playing tomorrow. Damn. All right. So I have a little bit of experience. <laughs> People don't know that. You think you think Slater knew that when I was over there filming filming the tunnel and he was getting ready to figure out what he was gonna ask Steve Kerr or Steph. Nah, he had no clue. No clue. That's why you, you can't assume anything of anybody you don't know. But the thing I loved about Slater was he was one of those guys that, oh, that's none of my business. So there, there's some journalists that try to get too nosy. And then I always dedicated all my time to you guys, to the channel, to the people that didn't have a credential I'd go race out there and try and get in position for the tunnel so that you knew what it felt like to be me out there. So I didn't have time to go buddy, buddy with Slater. Hey, what's up, buddy? I wasn't buddy, buddy with Raymond Ritter. And that probably hurt me a couple times, to be honest with you. I haven't told you the story someday. I'm not ready to tell it. But like, People don't know that. The journalists don't know that. John Dickinson doesn't know that, even though we were in the trenches together. So, like, you know, I feel it. You lose Decky, it's like it's like losing a guy that was with you on the beat. You know, you show up to Sacramento, morning shoot around, John Dickinson's there. Whoever it may be. See Tim Kawakami a couple times, you kind of go, oh, hey, what's up? Oh, what's up? Wait, I don't, I didn't never got to be buddy, buddy with them or anything, but so they don't really know me. So all of this, I just told you They this is like, if, if they were watching this live stream, they'd be like, Whoa, okay. Did not know that about you, Rich. Nobody knows. Monty pool doesn't even really know, but if anybody does know, it'd be mostly him. Cause he and I were on the beat the most. Kareth Burke doesn't have a clue who I am, but we're very cordial with each other and everything. We're, you know, we're good. So people don't know that I actually have basketball experience. And it helps out in these situations. I really do think it helps out. Um, so yeah, like I appreciate you guys too. I I didn't, I don't, I don't. I didn't need for you to say that, but I appreciate it. And it's, it's awesome. It, it, you guys are my friends. Like in this era, you can make friends through online. It's actually doable. Anyway. So I'm done with my diatribe. It kind of, it kind of went longer than I thought. <laughs> But uh, I want to I want to thank Johnson Weaver for for saying the Moody situation was weird because I I wanted to maybe the old me would have agreed with you right 
but like I'm trying to be more, you know, actually like Steve, like Steve is more that he's just that way. He, he, he must've grew up that way for him to be the way that he is and, and believing in wigs the way he does and believing in, he said he believed in Steph Clay and Draymond in the Tolbert interview as well. I'm pretty sure he did not just wigs. And uh, also, also, oh man, like here's another example. Oh, all these examples. These are incredible. But like he goes, Tom Tolbert kind of jokingly says, I wish Pajemski would ditch that, that, that hook shot. It never goes in. Do you know what Steve said? Take a wild guess what Steve said. He said, and I'll, I'll give you the pause for a little bit in case you want to actually guess in the, in the comments. He said, well, remember, remember, um, I, I, this isn't the punchline yet. He said, remember when, when Clay used to not be able to make layups and we called them clay ups? Remember that? Does that exist anymore? Like he can hit those now. So he just says, you know, first year guys, second, third year guys, they, they figure it out. They realize they need to make an adjustment against the athleticism of the modern NBA and they figure it out and they start making the layups. And he said, I believe in Brandon Pajemski again, but I believe in Brandon Pajemski. Holy mackerel. Like, God, this guy, does he not believe in anything? This, this guy's amazing. And so I feel like Steve figured that out a long time ago. Maybe it was his mom. It, it could have been his dad before his dad passed it was just that way. I don't know. Growing up, you know, the brain records everything from age two to 12 or so. And that's when you really, that's why it's no surprise to me that Steph or Clay are, you know, all time greats at shooting the best shooter in the planet. Cause they started at a super young age. They were, they were recording everything they saw and it was the NBA locker room, the NBA morning shoot around the, you know, the, the, the shooting, the shooting contests against Muggsy Bogues and, you know, Del Curry and the other Charlotte Hornets, the, the shooting uh, contest between the, the Lakers and the Portland Blazers that Clay witnessed you know, meeting, meeting Kobe at a young age and seeing how he practiced. All of those really help out and shape you later on. And uh, Kerr's got that I believe in you thing. Wow. Down pat. So he not only believed in Wiggs, Steph, Clay, and Draymond, but he also believed in Brandon Pajemski all in one interview yesterday. It was a great interview. You should check it out. It's on the SoundCloud of the Warriors, KMBR, Tom Tolbert. Yeah, so that's the thing. Long diatribe on a uh, long essay. On Steve Kerr. Belief in your guys. The American way of, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And quote unquote, till the wheels fall off. All right. Well, I I went to two hours and 42 minutes. I thought I was going to stop at two hours. I just went and talked and talked because like you guys allow me to uh, talk things out and it makes me feel better about our 18 and 22 record. So thank you to you as well. Um, oh, yeah. Steve talking about social issues as well. 
Yep. Let's go to three. Oh, man. I don't know if I can, but uh, why don't why don't we look at this loony? Let's see what Looney had to say about uh, Decky. Where was the Looney one? There it is. Hey, this should be a good one. Two years ago. Let's just listen to this and get to three hours. Why not? Oh, this is our intro that a lot of people hated. But that was when intros were the thing. Well, I, was just gonna, I don't know how much you've, you've seen of Phoenix yet this year, but give us uh, your idea of what you've seen of them and what, what you expect them all. Uh, we're a real, a real coach team. Uh, yeah, great leadership with Chris Paul on the court. Uh, coming off that finals <laughs> run, they've been uh, playing with a lot of confidence, a lot of force. You know, 16 game winning streak, so I watched them a few times and uh, seen that's a. Uh, Difficult to play defense against. They're going to run a lot of screens. They got a lot of great shooters, a lot of playmakers. So, uh, some of the good test for us. You'll get Aiden and JaVale quite a bit, I'm sure. <laughs> what do you What do you think about those guys? Uh, they're tough down low. You know, they both crash off the grass. Uh, they're great finishing around the rims. You know, when you got to hold uh, Chris Paul and Devin Booker, Kevin Payne and figure roll, it makes holding them that much harder. But uh, real game plan for it, and uh, it's a good, uh, good challenge for me. I'm playing against that much size, and I'm really excited for it. You had the, the 17 rebound game against Minnesota. You've been on a run of, of stacking up rebounds since then. Does that get like a hot streak in shooting at all, or or is it just kind of happenstance? Uh, in the game, it kind of gets like a hot, uh, hot streak. The ball just seems to start finding you. Uh, you know, usually, when I start getting a lot of rebounds in the first quarter, I start usually get a lot of them throughout the game. So, uh, something I focus on, uh, create extra possessions for our team, uh, something that, that's big for me. Uh, this year has been a great rebounding team. That's something that I take pride in. That's something that all I got to take pride in. Steve and all your teammates say you know, you're underrated over and over again. Do you feel like you're underrated? Uh, I don't know. I always think about it. You know, my teammates give me a lot of credit. My coach give me a lot of credit. So uh, as long as they give me a chance and give me time to play, uh, that's all I care about. Games against Phoenix and, and the Clippers, too. I mean, are those games where you feel like you get your skills really shine? Uh, definitely, you know, uh, I take pride in uh, being a versatile defender, being able to hold the post, and being able to switch on to guards. And when we play uh, teams like that, I'm, uh, I have to switch a lot. And uh, I try to, uh, you know, keep my reputation of being a good uh, perimeter defender. You know, it's tough when you got to go hold guards like uh, Booker, Paul George, Chris Paul. But uh, you try to do, do your best. And, and uh, you know, I think Draymond behind me, Wiggs behind me, so I get a lot of confidence from that. Hey, you guys and the Suns have a fair amount of continuity on both sides. I was wondering, how do you kind of rank the importance of continuity versus everything else that is, uh, you know, helpful for distinguishing? I would, I would say continuity probably number two. Of course, you got to have the talent probably the most important, but having chemistry take you a long way, you know. Building that trust in the offense, the defensive end, uh, you know, when everybody's on the string and everybody know where to be at, uh, it's easier to play, it's easier to communicate. You know, that's, that's what makes Phoenix so good. They had that continuity from last year, and uh, and uh, it's something that we both both have. So uh, we came together pretty quick, but that was kind of surprising. That uh, but during the summertime, guys were working out together and getting a lot of work in, and it's been carrying over to the season. It's early, but I mean, given 20 games in, do you, do you guys see the Suns as like, hey, the team that you have to go through in the Warriors? Uh, for sure. I mean, they did, they won the Western Conference uh, Finals last year, so or this team they got the target on their back, you know. <laughs> Uh, we want to, uh, you know, we didn't make the playoffs last year, so we've been hunting everybody. We want to go out there and prove a point and go out there with that chip on our shoulder. Do you feel like you guys have a target on your back at this point? Uh, Probably so. You know, I think since, as long as you got Steph Curry and Draymond on your team, you're probably going to have a target on your back. You know, them guys have been uh, biggest stars in the league the last over the last few years, uh, been part of a dynasty. So, you know, we got them guys coming to the arena. Everybody's hyped for it. The crowd is there. So, uh, we got a, got a target on our back, but we, we folks play everybody else. Uh, I mean, Chris Paul is probably one of the best pick and roll players ever. So, you know, him having the head of the snake and having the eight and the bell rolling to the rim, put so much pressure on, on, on the basket, and having guys like uh, Jay Crowder, Mattel Bridges, and guys that can shoot the lights off the ball, and who can drive to the paint. 
and it caused a lot of problems. You know, we played them last year uh, quite a few times, and uh, they gave us problems. So uh, we're in the grave planning for it, and uh, it's a good test for our defense and see where we are. What's the key for you? Uh, you know, I'm, we, we switch a lot uh, in the past with Chris Paul's side, and just being, uh, you know, keeping him in front. We never stay out of foul trouble when he's really crafty. And then keeping DeAndre Aiden off the, off the glass. You know, he's a force down there, Javel is too. So uh, that's a big part of what I need to do. Go out there and set the pump uh, for the physicality and uh, the rebound. What's it like getting pumps high? Uh, it's been great. He's been working. Oh my gosh. It was me that asked that. I asked Looney that question. <laughs> Crazy. Me on uh, being aggressive around the paint, working on my touch, working on my finishes. Uh, that's something I struggled with a lot uh, last year, and this year I mean, feel like I'm making progress. Still got a, a, while, a, way, a ways to go, but I feel a lot more confident around there. He's been on me, watching film with me, uh, the real eyes with me, uh, what I need to do better. So uh, I feel like I'm getting better in the, the, the life. It's probably an obvious question, but um, people talk about communication on the back line, the anchors of the defense. What do you think you and Draymond do so well in, in those roles? Uh, just being able to communicate with our guards and me and him being on the string. You know, when you got a, got a guy like Draymond who uh, who likes to roam a lot and uh, who's able to make some incredible plays off instinct, you got to be uh, you both got to be on the string. Uh, uh, I know where he's going to be at. Uh, you know where I'm going to be at. You know, we both switch a lot on guards, so we know if we pressure up, one of us is going to come help at the rim. So he's a. You know, I learned a lot from Draymond being on the on the back side, and he uh, you know, coaches all through throughout the game. Uh, having Steph, Steph be even more vocal this year too on the backside because we be out in a lot of actions as well. So, you know, just communication is key on defense. That's probably the most important thing on that side of the ball, and I think that's something that we've been excelling in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's uh, it's been great having him around. Somebody I can uh, play one on one with. Uh, somebody who can, you know, uh, show me some things on defense and on offense. You know, uh, when I work with him and, uh, and Becky. Uh, having that size and guys that have really been in the paint and have experience down there uh, gives you a uh, boost of confidence and be able to practice with somebody six eleven. You don't get to do that all the time. You know, uh, in years past, I had to practice against guards and uh, practicing against length just gives you a uh, more game like. Uh, we work. We uh, work on like a lot of post defense type stuff. He's great, like uh, like pulling the chair, uh, crafty things like that. That. Uh, no, he, he didn't even tell me, but I'm playing one-on-one -on -one against him. And he keep doing it to me, and I keep falling for him. I'm going to use that in the game. And, uh, and stuff like stuff, small things like that. Thanks, Kevon. Appreciate it. Oh, nice. I don't know if that last one was uh, Decky. Oh, Hilton. Something that Hilton told you. How to pull the chair. Yeah. I actually, I, I have a history of, t you know, tiny side story with Hilton Armstrong is that I used to, I used to uh, score keep um, these uh, scrimmages for uh, Frank Matriciano, who uh, claimed to fame. He was the strength trainer of Blake Griffin before Blake went number one. And uh, so one summer they had uh, Hilton Armstrong. So. I'm keeping I, – I keep stats. I, I brought the 24-second shot clock. I'm keeping score. I'm just – that's what I did. I ran basketball leagues. I, I love doing that. I kept stats. You know, Hilton scored like 34 points or something. You know, it's all numbers out of whack because uh, it's just a scrimmage. I got them the refs. I even paid the refs out of my own pocket. And then after one game, Hilton comes up to me, gives me 20 bucks, says, oh, man, thanks for keeping score and all that. And so that that was a pretty cool summer that I I only did a couple games, um, but I I was able to invite Jeremy Lin, and that was that was a whole other story. I mean, you guys have no idea just uh, what running running men's basketball leagues in the Bay Area what that opened me up to. It was nuts. So yeah, um, I don't talk to Jeremy anymore. Because uh, I, I know people love him, and they should. But he always chose uh, he always chose God over Asian Americans. And 
that that was not in the right frequency as me. So I'm not bitter about it, but at the same time, I'll still point out that there hasn't been another Asian American walked through the trail that Jeremy should have blazed. And so that's where fundamentally me and Jeremy disagree. And that should not come as a surprise to some of you because I literally started running men's basketball leagues or we allowed women to play. I started running adult basketball leagues for the Asian American community in the Bay Area. So you can see where I might have a set of ideals and those ideals aren't the same set of ideals of Jeremy Lin. So even though I invited him to scrimmage against Hilton Armstrong, scrimmage against, um, who were some other people there? Um, Daniel Orton, who played at Kentucky. Man, I haven't, I haven't given, I haven't texted Do in eons. I got to hit him up, man. I got to hit him up. Go, hey, Do, are you coming to the Bay, man? Yeah. Uh, so I played a role in the development of Jeremy Lin. How small it was, but an another part of the story, I got. <laughs> A freaking workout for thanks to uh, Darren Matsubara, Mats as he's known, very famous agent in the NBA. I I got Jeremy a workout with freaking Derek Rose, thanks to Mats. He didn't go. Okay, divergent, divergent philosophies. All good, whatever. I'm not saying. You know, I'm not saying anything other than that's what it, it is, what it is. So, yeah, shrug. But, anyways, if you wanted me to go on yet another tangent, I, I had to come up with some story to get to three hours. Uh, but yeah, that's my that's my Jeremy Lin, very abbreviated, very skipped over story. Uh, so it emanated from the Hilton Armstrong story. So four and a half more minutes to go. Let's see. Uh, what else can we do? Uh, go back to Decky right here. That's the official graphic that uh, the Warriors sent out by email today. What's up, Maddie? Um, four more minutes. Let's get the three hours. And then we'll call it a night and let's let's just go ahead and type it in next live. Maybe. Don't know. Friday. Thanks to Nicole for announcing that Monty Poole was saying the league might postpone the next game against the Mavs as well. So that game would be at probably seven because it's a home game at Chase. Yeah. Dow at GSW. <laughs> Glad you're here, Shavonsh. Three more minutes to go. We only uh, lost a lot of guys when I was talking, so they got bored of all that. All good. Um, R.I.P. Deki Milojevic. Hope I pronounced that right. Only 46 years old. Whew. 
So all the Warriors going through some grief right now. They should be on their way back to the Bay, according to Connor Letourneau of the San Francisco Chronicle, who wrote in the Chronicle today that they would fly back later on Wednesday. Play that Clay Let's Go Warriors clip. Was that in the, uh, the Looney one? Oh, it's not. Okay. I think I can find it on my phone and then airdrop it to my laptop. Let's see if I can find it. <laughs> yeah, I have it. Airdrop. Oh, man, it's 9 o'clock already. Let me see if I can order some food, man. Hang on hang on tight. Let's see if I can get within the deadline. No. I missed it. What am I going to do? Everything's closed. All right, I'll figure it out. <laughs> it went a little too long. Well, I'm definitely going to go over to uh, Starbucks. All right, here you go. First of all, let's do, uh, let's not do just us. Let's just do uh, the other one because I got to use the restroom as well. But um, here we go. Per Shivansh's uh, request, share screen. Why is my uh, computer so slow? Here we go. So special send off, Clay Thompson. Let's go Warriors. <laughs> special send off of Clay. saying let's go warriors here we go luke walton here head coach of the la lakers uh let's go warriors let's go warriors <laughs> we're having a great day here at qf um, all right that's it Take care, everybody. We'll see you on the next live, maybe Friday. Uh, I think I think we'll go live regardless. Uh, I'll do something. Don't you think? Why not? All right. R.I.P. Decky. And uh, thanks for joining. Bye-bye. <laughs>